Hi everyone, I'm Robert and E Chip. Today we are starting work on our outdoor enclosure and we we're gonna use it kind of as a recreational area so we can spend some time outside and covered area to work in if we need to. As if we won't be spending enough time outside <laughs> building things. And possibly as upside of downsizing suggested an outdoor kitchen which I would love you know to be able to cook outside I'd have to buy another cooking apparatus to cook outside but hey maybe so. Yeah uh, um, you know when uh, we thought about this a long time ago I thought I wonder if I should build a little bump out projection with glass and then we can keep our solar oven there all the time we don't have to get it out and you know, put it up and that kind of stuff. I don't know, we'll just see. Yeah, who knows? It'd be a good way to keep it out of the wind, though. That's true. But anyway, so we've got a 16 by 12 inch uh, screen. Inch? Shoot. That's gonna be awful yeah, small. small. A 16 feet, correct, by 12 feet, or 16 foot long by 12 foot long, which is it? Depends on the, <laughs> depends on the fence. But anyway, so we've got 16 by 12 going up. We have to dig holes for the posts and kind of do some removal of some stuff up here. That's what we're about to get started on. So this is a temporary screen porch because the shouse is also a temporary structure. It will not always be in this spot. It's only here temporarily until the house is built. At which point, this house is designed to be pulled because it's on skids. We simply disconnect the plumbing and electrical and pull it, uh, you know, just drag it to a different part of the property when we're done. So, when we sink these posts, we won't be putting in any cement or anything like that. We're using pressure treated wood. Uh, so that, uh, you know, in a couple of years or whatever, it'll come right out of the ground. We'll just dismantle this screen porch and relocate it with the shouse if, it, if we choose to do that. Again, I'm kind of leery of not putting, you know, concrete or something in there to support the poles because things are supposed to be rated to 90 miles an hour here. He's pretty convinced that we'll be okay. We'll be just fine. I mean, I don't want it to be attached up here and then rip the entire side of the shouse down as well when it goes. Well, you know, we have 10 foot posts that are going to be sunk two feet in the ground. And that means one fifth of the length of the post will be in the ground, which is sufficient uh, to hold the post. You pack it real well, stuff like that, you'd be fine. Besides, if you put concrete in that shallowly, it'll frost heave. It'll heave. Yeah. Yeah, in the frost. So, anyway. Okay. <laughs> Let's get on it. Okay. We got the metal down off of Dumpy. Put the metal down first because it'll bend if you're not careful. And uh, now the now that we got the metal off, we can go ahead and dump that wood right here onto these skids. We've installed some batter boards. Okay, and so now you can get the idea for what the batter board is for. It supports a string, which helps you take measurements, line things up, all that good stuff. So how easy was that, Rob, or squaring up the string on the batter boards? 
Measure 80 times, drill once. <laughs> so now we're ready to position our posts, drill holes with the auger, sink them. This is where we start building, Robert, we think. Drill, baby, drill, as <laughs> SP would say. The ground out here in front of the house is uneven. And if we bury the posts at a common depth, then these posts are going to wind up at different heights ultimately because the ground's uneven. So what I've done is I've given them a mark with a marker where I want them to be in the ground. So when I sink the post, what I do is I line the laser up with the mark on the wood and then I know that my posts are at the right depth. Normally what you do is you'd sink these posts and then you'd measure up top and just lop off the top so that they're where you want them to be. In this case, I want to be able to preserve these posts because I'm not using to cement to cement them in the ground. They are pressure treated against the bugs. If I, if I sink them this way, I don't have to lop off the tops. And when I go to pull them out of the ground in a couple of years, I'll have full size pieces left over. So that's why I'm doing it. What you got there, Robert? A ground drill. <laughs> Chinesium uh, No, you're not auger. allowed to say that now. Well, we'll see how well it works. It started right up on the first pull. No, I'm talking about oh. calling it what you called it. Chinesium? No, you can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> leveling these posts <clears throat> because we couldn't see to do it earlier because we couldn't see the laser so we had to wait till dark well good morning uh, we got the posts plumbed and set as you can see they just right up against the string there batter boards are a nice uh, nice tool to use for something like this and going against the shafts there so time to remove the string and uh, let's uh, start building around these posts when I'm working with this particularly when I'm stretching um, screen around or when I'm putting the roof on I don't want these things moving and I need to have you know some kind of purlin or stretcher to attach the siding to so I'm just gonna attach it down here and uh, go from there Distance from there, there's 12 feet. It just so happens to have a 12 foot two by four, so let's do it. As you can see, we put up several two by fours around the perimeter of these boards. The bottom ones will stay. We've got them leveled and they're in their permanent position. The top ones here are just used to stabilize the 4x4s so we can stretch um, the screen around it. So we have cut this 1x2 or whatever this thing is, I don't know, to the length of the screen. And we're going to wrap it around there and tack it up there in this corner here, right here in this position like such. Then we're going to take the screen and run it around all of these 4x4s and staple it in in one continuous piece of screen. Then we'll come back and cut room out for the door over there and the other things we need to do. Okay, so here's how far we've gotten. We, uh, we put three stretchers on here to hold the, uh, we're gonna have some metal pro panel on the bottom half of this wall, screen on top. Uh, built in a door, cut away the screen here. 
from this section, built in a little doorway for a screen door, along with a threshold, uh, raised up, not at ground level, because we're gonna have a little bit of a floor in here using some pallets, so. Good morning, another day working on the uh, screen porch. It's a nice morning, about 32 degrees with a very light breeze. And uh, we're going to go ahead and try to get the roof on right now. If we have time, we'll work on the sides. We have somewhere else to be later today. So um, we only have a few hours to work on this. As you can see, we've got our rafters cut and ready uh, to go up here. We are gonna chop off, you can see where that line is up there on there. We're gonna chop these off pretty short and just have a slight overhang string a string along this uh, beam or header uh, and then you know to make sure the wall's straight and straighten make sure the wall is straight as I put the rafters up so I get a nice uh, so that everything's even and straight all the way down so that's what we do So there it is, we got the rafters up and spaced properly. Uh, we got them on the hangers over here. Over here, for a little added protection, we're gonna do what they call these hurricane clips uh, that uh, we'll just connect to the header and the rafter like that for a little added strength against the wind. As we've said before, the poles are not cemented in. They're not really rigid. I mean, you know, the more stuff we get nailed on here and the more we get it tied together, the more rigid it becomes, but, um, Again, these are just sitting in sand. So we need to at least water these posts in now that we've got everything set and square. And um, that'll help with the rigidity a little bit. And then uh, we will uh, finish putting panels up and the roof and uh, get this thing done so that we can enjoy it. <laughs> 62 degrees, Robert says it got today. Well, that's probably what it was. But uh, yeah, boy, that's a surprise. It's still down in the uh, double digits or even single digits overnight. But yeah, it's nice. So anyway, we've got these purlins up over top of the rafters. Got the rafters nice and straightened. You know, the important thing when you put these purlins on is to make sure since there's often a you know like a curve in the rafters to make sure that the rafters is set straight as you go as you as you uh, nail them in and screw them on one thing i want to show you is that uh, i'm using screws in all of this uh, important reason for using screws again temporary structure uh, this whole thing is put together with screws or lag screws lag bolts uh, because we have to be able to take it apart again someday. It's typically better to use nails, 16 penny nails or something like that, 10 penny nails, whatever they call them, 16 Ds, uh, when, and nail this stuff together. Because nails are made of, of a more ductile material, but that means that they can give and bend a little bit better. Screws, on the other hand, will fail suddenly, they can, because the, the metal in them is much more brittle. Not much more, but it's more brittle. So um, it's advisable to use nails 
or good, you know, framing screws, construction screws, something like that. Um, so, I mean, don't get the wrong idea by my using screws here. Um, wouldn't be my preference, except that we're going to take this down someday. Are you happy with this so far, Robert? Yes, so far. <laughs> I'm afraid it's still going to blow over in a big old wind. Who knows? Did you water those posts in well? No, just a, one time. I need more. Yeah, we'll do it again. Well, hey everybody, it's uh, it's E-Chip and uh, another day out here uh, trying to get this done. Yesterday I was able to finish up the siding uh, on this including the uh, you know the corner trim on that so that's good <clears throat> and then we got some snow but uh, uh, now and I know I looked like the guy from the Skyrim games uh, video games but uh, anyway it's 26 degrees and we've got a oh probably half inch of snow on the ground from a uh, threatened winter storm that really turned out to be a little bit of a dud uh, not that I mind but uh, so yeah the coyotes off in the distance are howling and I want to see how much more of this I can get done I want to put the screen door on I need to cut a dog door right about here and then I want to see, because it's not too windy today, I want to see if I can get these roof panels up by myself uh, and get them on. So that'll be on the agenda for today. Hey, Roscoe, come on. Come on. You're here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Push on it. There you go. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Reba. Okay, out of the way. Move out of the way. Reba, come on. Come on, Reba. Push. Come on. Come on. Come on, Reba. Come on. Come on. Come on. I got it. Come on. That's right here. Come on. Out of there. Come on. Come on, Reba. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Reba. There you go. Good girl. I'll get lucky we'll get some rain to wash all the sand off of this roofing
I'm looking through the screen at you. Right. Nice, tight screen. Oh. Sounds like a drum when you tap it. It looks good. Good. I like it a lot. Good. good. Well, the screen room is done. For, I mean, as done as it'll be. Uh, this is how we'll leave it. Because uh, it's got to... Uh, uh, it's just temporary, as we've said. But uh, we, uh, you know, we just uh, cut some two by fours and, you know, like quarter inch lengths or quarter inch widths and stapled it on here to tighten the screen on the inside. And we, we're going to have to move Buzz forward a little bit, I think, because we've got plans for, we got plans for that area right there, which are coming up, coming up. And we got some screen. Uh, so, so far, no flies. It's nice. I mean, this morning, and it's Easter morning, we had a bunch of flies here on the screen, but they're all gone now. But it's nice to know that they can't get in. Ha ha. So, uh, dog doors in, obviously. And the pool, no pool noodles are for an upcoming project that you'll see. But uh, next thing to do would be get some pallets in here for the floor. We, we grab pallets whenever we see them. So it'll take a little while to build this floor out, but uh, yeah, right now we we just got dirt. But um, got a table and four chairs, which would be nice for sitting out here and enjoying things. Next thing to do is when I built the house, I built in a porch light uh, uh, box right here, and so I've got to you know remove this piece of trim, get in there, cut that out around it, and install the light. Uh, you know fixture and then I think Robert wants to run some string some lights out around here to sort of make it look fun so that'll be the next thing but you know for the most part this project's done so glad how you like it Robert am I really super close up oh you're good can you see me yep I think it's a fantabulous space now we're oh see the wind's picking up already it's opened up the door um so we're predicting some high winds the next couple of days so i'm glad we got the screen done the screen room done before that but uh high winds and we got all kinds of projects coming up we've got dumpy over there that needs some work before we can do some logging uh i've got a tail light to fix on rusty over there dodge now is new problem Something with the traction control on it uh, going off every time we hit a bumpy road. Maybe nothing, maybe something. And I don't know. We need to fix our, we still need to fix our, our um, yeah. gas cans over there, our gas tank. Then we need to move them. And then behind them, you can see Dinah over there, way over there. Dinah, we got to crack apart and fix the transmission leak. And we just got to, we got a ton of stuff going all the time. But I don't know where we're going to put those two eyesore. Gas cans. Gas cans, we'll move them down a ways. Down but, this uh, way? Mm, no, maybe back that way. I don't yeah, know. We'll I don't see. Know. We'll see. I don't like people being able to see them. Well, I don't know. Maybe anyway, right here. We, you know, that's the house construction area over there, so we can't, we can't do anything over there. So, anyway. Anyway, it'd be nice to move them down the hill, which is over there. Um, but we got a clear pad for that. We've got a building we have to move. Gosh, we have so many things to do. Just not enough hours in the day. But at least we got this project, you know, pretty much done. So it was fun, but I'm glad it's over. And we will see you on the next one. Bye.